and welcome to today's Cyber Chapter webinar. What every firm administrator needs to know about lawyer rankings, listings, and directories. I'm Daisy Brown. I'm the webmaster for the Cyber Chapter of ALA and your host for today's webinar. Today's presentation will run for an hour. We ask that you submit all your questions in the chat window. If they're not answered during the presentation, they will be addressed at the end. Views and opinions expressed today are those of our speaker and not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of ALA or the Cyber Chapter. This live session qualifies for one CLM credit hour in the subject area of legal industry business management towards the additional hours required of some functional specialists to fulfill their application, or one CLM credit hour under the same area for recertification. Session is being recorded. Playback at a later time. Uh, the link will be on the home page at cyberala.org uh, in a day or two. Uh, definitely by the end of this week. Uh, it will be there for about 30 days or until the next webinar is uploaded. Cyber Chapter members, you have access on our forum as well uh, indefinitely to all of our webinars. Please complete the evaluation that uh, pops up at the end of this session, or if you leave a little early uh, before I close the session, you can also use the link on our homepage to fill out that evaluation questionnaire. It does help us bring you what you need and, uh, and it gives us some feedback that's very valuable. Good now. Today our presenter is John Remsen, Jr., President of the Remsen Group. John is widely recognized as one of the country's leading authorities on law firm leadership, management, marketing, and business development. Since 1997, the Remsen Group has worked with more than 360 law firms to help them develop and implement long-term strategies to improve cohesiveness, performance, and profitability. John is a frequent speaker and author on law firm leadership and marketing topics. He has spoken at national and regional conferences for the Association of Legal Administrators, uh, as well as the Legal Marketing Association and numerous state and local bar associations. He returns now for his fourth webinar speaking for us here at the Cyber Chapter, and we're very happy to have him back. Welcome, John. Well, thank you, Daisy, and it's good to be back, and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to visit with you all this afternoon and talk about uh, rankings and directories. There are a lot of them out there. It can be very, very confusing. Um, yeah, I've been around a while. My, my <laughs> It's funny, when da Daisy reads off my bio, I go, man, this guy really knows what he's talking about, and, and really it's just that I've been around a while uh, working with law firms for about 25 years as an in-house marketer. Uh, as well as a consultant, working mostly with smaller and mid-sized law firms, helping them with firm-wide strategy, marketing, business development, and such. And I do a lot of speaking. Not a lawyer. I uh, have an MBA from the University of Virginia. And, uh, again, delighted to be with you all here um, this afternoon. I like that uh, you gave a disclaimer there. Uh, I do have strong opinions about directories, and I don't hesitate to express them. And uh, I know we're being recorded, so I might moderate some of my opinions a bit uh, this afternoon. But uh, I think it's really, really important you assess what's out there and be strategic and thoughtful and deliberate as to how you're spending your firm's precious marketing and business development dollars. Uh, there are some great handouts here I encourage you to take a look at. Uh, they include the PowerPoint deck as well as some uh, nice articles on this topic. Uh, and a summary of some meeting notes. Um, I presented a similar session to the Legal Marketing Association last year, and it featured a panel uh, consisting of uh, representatives of Jaffe, uh, PR, who do a lot of work in this area, um, an in-house marketer at uh, Paul Hastings, a big Los Angeles-based firm, whose job it is nothing but to assess directories and figure out where Paul Hastings wants presence, and to put together submissions and uh, make sure that they, uh, they're where they want to be. She has a whole department of people who do nothing but that. It's amazing. I didn't realize those positions existed, but they do within big law firms. We had the editor from Best Lawyers. 
we had the editor from Chambers, and there's some really nice meeting notes uh, from that session that I encourage you to take a look at. Uh, many of you know me for the Managing Partner Forum. Uh, I do programs for law firm managing partners, and our next conference coming up May 2, 3 here in Atlanta. And if you think your managing partner uh, is looking for a place to learn with and from uh, peers, other managing partners from around the country, uh, you might want to check out this program coming up in Atlanta. We do affiliate with ALA. And uh, last year, Gary Swisher, your president, and Oliver Yandel participated um, and really enjoyed the session. We're all about advancing of the business of law, as is uh, ALA. So we have uh, very common purposes to help managing partners, firm administrators be more effective in a very challenging, often ill-defined role. Uh, today's session... Uh, we're going to look at some big picture trends, marketing and business development, what's going on out there, how directories and listings fit in. Uh, we'll look at the proliferation of these rankings and directories. You wouldn't believe how many of them are out there, and it wasn't all that long ago when Martindale Hubble was king and uh, just about the only game in town. Uh, we'll, we'll look at reasons why you might want to participate in directory listings, uh, cite some studies as to who uses these directories as they find and select outside counsel, uh, talk a little bit about how you might figure out which directories, listings, rankings are most appropriate for your law firm, and then we'll close out. I'll offer uh, my suggestions as to how to approach this uh, uh, this issue. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to type them in. Uh, Daisy has provided some instructions, so uh, type those questions in. We'll do our best to address them as we go through today's session. Uh, we'll try to adjourn uh, now probably shortly after 3 o'clock, um, but uh, fire off those questions. Before we get started, just to give me a, a feel for the firm sizes uh, represented in the room today, uh, we're going to feature our first polling question, uh, which asks, how many lawyers are at your firm? If you could go ahead and punch, push the uh, uh, push the button that uh, most accurately reflects your firm size, that would be helpful. And uh, look in the results coming in here. It looks like about a third of our participants are from small law firms. I think it's important to understand that these directories aren't for big law. Uh, don't be intimidated. And in fact, many of these directories are looking for smaller and mid-sized firms. Uh, the big law firms have entire departments of people who put these submissions together. Uh, and, and many of the editors of these directories are telling, are, are, will tell you, you know, we are looking for those smaller and mid-sized law firms who do exceptional jobs and deserve ranking and recognition within our directories. Looks like about 63% of firms are at uh, 25 and fewer lawyers. I'll try to adjust my uh, comments mostly toward the smaller and mid-sized law firms uh, participating in today's session. Uh, just to kind of frame the issue, um, uh, marketing, business development, big picture stuff, what's going on out there? That's our friend uh, uh, here in Atlanta and Georgia, Honey Boo Boo, and uh, she likes beauty contests. And um, for a lot of firms, marketing and business development does involve RFPs and beauty contests. So, so there she is looking good, hopefully winning, uh, winning the crown for her pageant. Here's what firms are doing in terms of marketing business development. Big picture, uh, 2 to 4% of gross revenue has been the benchmark for decades and pretty much remains so. Uh, we'll look at some data suggests there are more and more firms spending north of 4% of their uh, gross revenue into marketing and business development. One thing we are observing, and it's a very clear trend, and that's a shift in how law firms are investing those marketing dollars. Um, in, in the early days, uh, marketing was where it was at, branding, the firm brochure, uh, advertising, uh, largely check writing, and, and the marketing is important to set the stage, but no one's going to hire your law firm because you have a pretty logo. 
firms are figuring out, much like accounting firms before them, that the actions with business development, getting our lawyers out there, developing relationships, reputation among folks in a position to hire and refer, joining organizations, regularly scheduled FaceTime, client site visits, writing, speaking, uh, much more effective activities than simply writing checks into advertisements, fancy brochures, fancy websites, and a slick logo. We're seeing firms increasing budgets in these areas, and I'll give you some data to support that, yet I still see many firms wasting their precious marketing dollars uh, in, in these three areas at the bottom of the slide, charitable contributions, which may or may not make sense in the grand scheme of what your firm wants to be doing and where it's going, powerful partner pet projects uh, that, that may suck up a lot of resources and be a bit off point, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it is a pet project of one of our powerful partners, something we've been doing for years. And there's this, there's a tendency to carry on with the, these things, whether or not they, they make sense. As your firm evolves, as its marketing and business development strategy evolves, I see a lot of dollars as well uh, frittered away on rankings and directory listings that aren't hitting your target audience, perhaps that few people read and, and, and don't reference as they find and select outside counsel. We asked managing partners, we do a survey every April, 154 managing partners weighing in, and we asked them, uh, what are your firm's top strategic priorities over the next year or two? Pick your top three. And you can see that marketing and business development is red hot. 80% of law firm managing partners in this survey said that's our uh, among our top three priorities as we evolve uh, into the rapidly changing marketplace for legal services, improving lawyer productivity, uh, focusing attention towards succession planning, round out the top three. One thing we did see, and this is some polling at our managing partner conference this year in Atlanta, 90 managing partners weighing in. What is the percentage of revenue your firm invests in its marketing? And my takeaway, my surprise on this was more than, more than about 25% of the managing partners in the room said we're spending north of 4%. First time I've seen such a high percentage of firms investing as much in their marketing and business development program. That doesn't include salaries for the marketing staff. So uh, clearly firms are focused on marketing and business development. They're investing more resources, more attention uh, to this increasingly important area uh, in, in, in the context of the business side of running the law firm. Quick stats, and then we'll jump into directories, and we're going to go rapid fire through these next few graphs. Here's the uptick in spend. This is a, C, a survey we did with ALA in August. Many of you probably participated. 254 principal administrators, firms, 10 or more, is who responded to these questions. And we asked, what's your spend on marketing, on website, internet-related marketing, 2017 versus 2016? And look at the huge upticks in investment firms are making in their websites, in their online presence. Uh, that is an unbelievable uptick in spending. We're seeing an uptick in the amounts uh, that firms are investing in their events and seminars. I love these. FaceTime with clients, prospective clients, and in relatively small and intimate settings. Teach your lawyers how to network, uh, uh, how to uh, take advantage of your firm events. They're not just there to show up and eat breakfast or show up and have drinks, but there's stuff they can be doing before, during, after events to maximize their effectiveness. Branding, uh, content management, uh, largely web-based blogs, changing content, articles and such on our website. The more you change, the more relevant you bring to your website, the more it is likely to be found. It helps with your search engine optimization. Our investment in organizations 
uh, those target-rich environments where we're going to mix and mingle with prospects and clients. Uh, we're seeing an uptick in investment here, 2017 versus 2016, kind of flat. Uh, overall, but look at the number of firms that are starting to cut back and uh, and reassess and become more strategic as to how they place submissions and subscribe to various listings and directories out there. You'll be shocked when we get into the details at how many of them there are. I think many of them are a waste of your time and money. You need to be thoughtful, strategic, selective as to how you approach this uh, uh, this situation. Generally, here's our recommendation in terms of marketing and business development. Focus on current clients before you get all worked up going after the new ones. Go visit them. I love industry practice groups. I love individual marketing plans. If your firm's ready for that level of structure and accountability, more and more training for lawyers. They don't teach lawyers how to make rain in law school. They don't teach lawyers much about leadership in law school. Uh, so if they're not learning it in law school, they're, they need to learn it at your firm. So make sure you're investing in your young people, their leadership, their sales training, tracking time, hiring an in-house marketer. Find ways to uh, prevent squandering your precious marketing resources. You only have so much time and money you're going to throw at your firm's marketing and business development program and, uh, and make sure you're not wasting that time and money on things that aren't going to generate uh, satisfactory returns on investment. So that's kind of big picture, what's going on kind of how directories fit into the grand scheme of things, what firms are spending in this area, and now we'll d dive deep into our topic. Uh, I think here we have another polling question, and uh, that question involves, um, yeah, who at your firm handles the rankings, listings, directories? Uh, Press the uh, the answer that uh, that best applies to your firm's situation, and it looks like many of you on the call are the people responsible for figuring out your firm's strategy. How make how we make sure we get maximum bang for the buck? Sixty two percent say that responsibility lies with me. I'm sure those of you with marketing folks, it probably uh, sits within their realm of responsibilities. Uh, a couple of firms here leave it to the individual lawyers uh, to assess whether or not they should uh, you know, sign up for who's who or sign up for super lawyers. Um, I think it should be a more centralized firm approach as opposed to just letting the individuals do it. Uh, I see a lot of firms that will give each partner, let's say, an allocation of five, six thousand dollars to spend on marketing business development as they see fit, with little accountability as to how they spend that five or six thousand dollars, and often they're writing the checks to the directories. I think we need to rein that in a little bit and hold lawyers accountable for the money they spend. And uh, make sure if they are investing in directories, it fits with firm strategy and, uh, and they're directories that your clients and target audiences reference uh, and part of their selection of outside counsel. Remember the day when Martindale Hubble was king. This is 1976. There were only four volumes back then. And remember when Martindale, oh, grew to, what, 15, 18 volumes? They made a lot of money uh, selling listings by the column inch. That's how they charged back in the day. Uh, and, and the AV rating in Martindale was just about the only game in town. Well, those days are long gone. The pro proliferation of directories is unbelievable. Our friends at Jaffe count more than 1,200 of them. 
I'll bet there are many, many, many more. They might be geographic, you know, by state, by region, by country, by practice area. You know, there's some directories like Best, if you're in uh, the insurance defense business, uh, that makes sense. Uh, there's the Red Book. If you're a bond council, it's focused on area of law. Uh, others are focused on industries. Some directories are overtly pay to play. Others aren't. But there are many, many, many of them out there, and more and more coming online every day. And as I think most of you probably suspect, that these directories are <laughs> largely an appeal to lawyer ego. Uh, I remember in, uh, when I was in high school and I got the letter that I was in who's who among American high school students. Remember that? Um, who's who among American high school students. I don't know who was more excited, me or my parents. Uh, but they bought the listing and the big book that went along with it. And it's funny, I'm, I'm downsizing right now, moving from a larger house to a smaller one, and I'm, I'm going through boxes I haven't opened in years. And lo and behold, I came across my who's who among American high school students. I hadn't seen it in 30 years, and I went and saw my directory in there, uh, my listing within that directory. I'll bet no one on the planet has seen that listing uh, except for myself and my parents um, why did we do that? Why did we spend the money on the book and my little bio in the book? Basically to appeal to my ego and make me feel good. Nobody read it. Uh, nobody references it. Uh, it was done for more internal ego gratification than any other reason. Uh, so why? Why should we participate in these directories? And I think, you know, there is some validity to feeding your lawyer's ego. You know, think of the 40 under 40 programs in a lot of cities and your young up-and-coming lawyers getting that recognition and giving them that reaffirmation that you're doing a great job, keeping it up. We're, we're not doing this to, to get you in front of clients and prospective clients. We're doing this to congratulate you for recognition as, as one of uh, the 40 under 40. And, and that's okay, but know that that's why we're doing it. Not so much for marketing and business development, but more to feed the lawyer's ego. We might want to invest in directories to enhance a lawyer's reputation. We may want to invest in listings and directories to enhance our firm's reputation. Uh, many in-house marketers tell me they do this to uh, improve their search engine optimization. Lawyers.com specifically, uh, which is Martindale Hubble, um, apparently drives a lot of traffic to websites. And those in-house marketing people who analyze this sort of thing say, hey, you know, these directories, although we're not getting clients as a direct result, we are getting traffic to the website, and that's helping with our search engine optimization. So that might be a reason to do it. Some of these directories will generate legitimate leads. Avo, for example, if you're targeting uh, consumers in a family law practice, an estate planning practice, a criminal defense practice, Avo might be a smart play. Understand how it works. Um, unsophisticated consumers of legal services do find Avo, and if you haven't seen it, check it out. Every lawyer, whether they realize it or not, has an Avo listing, uh, and you claim that listing. Um, and it's kind of like Yelp. People are rating the lawyer's performance and offering commentary about what they like, what they didn't like. Uh, check out Avo, um, and, and that one can work pretty effectively if you bring a strategic approach to it and you're marketing a consumer-oriented practice. I don't think many business people turn to Avo. I don't think in-house counsel turn to Avo, but... Uh, Unsophisticated consumers uh, within the general public just might. Uh, another reason why we need to be in that directory is because everybody else is there, which in my opinion is absolutely not the reason to do something, because everybody else is doing it. Um, 
you know, I, I, find, I often joke that the lemming is the official mascot of the legal profession. Lawyer, law firms like to follow. They don't like to lead. And I'll often propose something new to a law firm, and the first question I'll get is, who else is doing that? Probably not the right question to ask, but uh, you know how lawyers think. Uh, they want to follow the crowd, don't want to be left out. We've got to be in the book if our competitor is in the book. Uh, in my view, that is a completely uh, uh, wrong reason to want to participate in the directories. Um, others do it. They have no idea why they're doing it. Well, we've always done it. Or, uh, you know, Sam wants to be in there. Sam's one of our senior partners, and I don't know why he wants to be in there, but I'm not about to question Sam. Um, again, you're spending limited dollars and time in your marketing and business development. So really think through why you're participating in these directories if, in fact, you are. Who uses these things? Uh, this is, uh, this is a, a businessman. He's online doing his research, taking his notes. He's got some books there. Who really uses these directories? You need to figure that out. I would talk to your clients. If you're thinking about a directory or a listing or a ranking, uh, I might ask a handful of your clients what they look to, if anything, uh, to reinforce a decision to hire a certain lawyer or a certain law firm. Talk to your clients. Find out what they reference. Tune into that. Um, but uh, prospective clients, um, do they use them? I think it largely depends on the sophistication of the client. The more sophisticated the client, the less likely they are to rely on directories, rankings, and listings. In-house counsel, general counsel, the surveys I've seen recently, Altman Wiles CLO survey, uh, BTI does a survey, uh, suggests that in-house counsel aren't using directories uh, is they, uh, they you know it's more of a of a relationship type uh, 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 exercise as I build my short list of firms to consider and narrow in on who I want to hire for a particular matter but talk to talk to those uh, clients think about your prospects maybe you want to get to the referral sources opposing counsel might be checking you out the judiciary might be checking you out uh, I think this bottom bullet point is, is perhaps the strongest one here. Um, your recruits, uh, lawyers you're looking to hire, support staff you're looking to hire might look at best places to work in town. And if your firm's on that list, that might help you in your recruiting of support staff. So that audience might be uh, one to really consider as you look at all your options and figure out if you're going to play the game, and if so, uh, with which listings and directories you'd like to work. So uh, think that through. Do your research. Be strategic. Just don't go into check writing mode because your lawyers want to see their names and lights or they want that plaque uh, in their office. Uh, be thoughtful and be strategic. Certainly there are many. Uh, these are just a few. Uh, I went online preparing our slide deck here, and these are some of the more uh, popular suspects. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what directories, generally speaking, I think are the ones to take a look at, but so much depends on your firm and what your strategy and who you're trying to get in front of. Uh, but we've got everything from the old Martindale Hubble and its AV rating. And by the way, you can get an AV rating without subscribing to Martindale Hubble. Um, ten years more in service, you put together your submission, there's a good chance you can get that AV designation without subscribing to Martindale Services. Uh, Chambers over here, I think, is the real deal. Uh, Chambers is London-based. Uh, they have several hundred researchers that do their research. So when you put together your submissions, uh, understand their process and provide your submission as they want. They want references. Make sure your references are briefed. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Chambers in a bit. It's not just for big law. 
And the editor of Chambers, who was in this LMA panel last uh, year, we did uh, talk quite frankly. I want to hear from smaller firms. Pick up the phone. Give me a call. I'm happy to walk you through uh, how to pr submit a, a quality submission. And if at first we don't accept you, try, try again. Uh, keep at it. We want to help you because we're inundated by submissions from big firms and we're really looking for those standout smaller and mid-sized law firms, but we don't hear from them. So, so Chambers is a matter of submitting your credentials and having them check you out. Uh, on the other hand, we've got Best Lawyers over here, which started in the late 80s. Uh, by a group out of Aiken, South Carolina. And that's a vote. That's kind of a popularity contest. Uh, it's a voting thing, and whoever gets the most votes gets the best lawyers. Well, guess what? You can organize a campaign. And I've worked with groups of smaller firms to do just that. And, uh, you know, we'll get some ballots together. You know, propose your people. We'll circulate a ballot among half a dozen law firms. And, uh, you know, muster up the votes required to get that recognition. The big law firms are playing this game. Um, um, so smaller law firms can play the game, too. You just have to know the rules of engagement and, uh, and go for it uh, and be strategic. There's 40 under 40, fine law, uh, Florida trend. I'm from Florida originally. They have something called the legal elite, and I help them develop their methodology. And here again, that's, that's a popularity contest. They put out ballots to all the lawyers in the state. And who, do you, who do you want to vote for? And you get enough people voting for you, you're in. Uh, so know, know how they go about their business. Study it. If you decide you want to be in Florida Trends Legal Elite, and that's a good one if you're a Florida law firm or you have uh, offices in Florida, uh, understand how it works. And uh, and and play the game. You you you'll be successful more often than not. So how do we approach it all? Here you are. You firm administrators have enough going on in your busy day uh, without having to grapple with all these directories hitting you for for dollars and playing to your lawyers' egos. What's a what's a firm administrator? What's an in-house marketer to do? I think, as we kind of alluded to uh, a bit ago, uh, be real clear on who your target audiences are. Talk to them. Ask them, do they reference the, the, the directories? If so, which ones? Uh, understand that. Do a couple of interviews of some clients of the type you want more of. It may be bankers. It may be uh, real estate developers. It may be government entities. Uh, so think about who your target audience is, what they read, what they respect, what they reference in their selection, uh, in their uh, due diligence in finding and selecting outside counsel. Be really, really strategic. And I think it's more effective to go deep in two or three directories then try to spread your resources thinly across a dozen directories. Have presence in a few meaningful places. I think you'll be far more impactful and generate a much higher return on your investment if you go deep within a few of these listings directories than try to spread your resources across too many. Have an impact. Get noticed. To say, do your research, understand the methodologies, um, and I think it's important to bring a firm-wide approach to what you're doing. Um, if you let individual lawyers, individual office decide how they're going to spend their monies, it can become very, very murky and disjointed, and uh, and I think uh, ineffective. But rein it in, bring in a firm-wide policy, firm-wide strategy uh, that gets you in those directories that are consulted by the audiences you want to reach. Once you figure out where you want to be, go for it. Don't wait for the directories to come to you. You go after the ones in which you want presence. And don't be shy. 
uh, I suggest you befriend the editors uh, of of uh, uh, of the ones you want to be in. Uh, chat them up. Uh, get to know them a little bit. Develop a nice, friendly relationship. They want to help you. Don't be intimidated, and, and don't fall into the impression that this is for big law. And I would encourage you to read through the notes from that LMA conference last year where uh, the, the editors of both Best Lawyers and Chambers said exactly that. Don't be shy. Call me. If I don't return your call, call me back. These are busy people. Don't be put off. Don't be shy. Go for it once you figure out where you want to be. And let's pause here. And uh, before we get into specific directories, I'd like to just toss the question, uh, does your firm invest dollars, not just have AV ratings and such, but do you invest money in, in Martindale and its various services? And wow, this does not surprise – well, actually, it does surprise me. Look at the number of you, almost two-thirds, who said, we've dropped it. And I'm often recommending to smaller and mid-sized firms, heck, firms of all sizes, rethink uh, the money you're spending with Martindale. Back in the day, it was the only directory in the AV rating was was you know <laughs> was was the holy grail for lawyers. I remember when my dad got his AV rating, you would have thought he died and went to heaven. Uh, very proud of that. But uh, more and more folks are saying, you know what, <laughs> we can find better ways to spend those dollars. Um, I'm not surprised to see a good number of firms that say they've dropped their Martindale listing, but I'm surprised that two-thirds of the firm on the call have done just that. Um, I challenge you. Uh, challenge your lawyers. Can you point to a matter, can you point to a client that we got through our Martindale listing? And if they can't come up with one, and in most cases they won't be able to, uh, you know that gives you cause to think. You know, couldn't we spend that money more effectively somewhere else? Going to visit a client, uh, you know, going to a a, a, a conference in uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, you know, I think it's FaceTime, it's friendships, it's relationships. And the more sophisticated the client, the less likely they are to rely on directories. Martindale Hubble, uh, most non-lawyers don't know what it is. Uh, but if you're marketing to the judiciary, uh, if you're marketing to referring lawyers, you know, particularly senior lawyers, Martindale still might make sense. Uh, but in most cases, I think you can find that money uh, better spent other places. Thank you for your candor on uh, on Martindale. It used to be the, the only game in town. Not so much anymore. And here are the ones that I sense are, are, are ones that matter. Uh, I mean, there are others. But generally speaking, if you look out at that landscape and the hundreds and hundreds of these directories out there, I, I've talked to a lot of in-house marketers about this. I've done a number of sessions and panels about this. I've gotten to know the chambers and best lawyers people pretty well. Uh, these are the ones that, that seem to be worth taking a look at, particularly if you're a business firm. Chambers is the real deal. And they're a relative newcomer to the United States. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, they're London-based. They have hundreds of researchers who, uh, who, are, who, are, who are going through these submissions. They check their references. And my takeaway in, in getting to know the Chambers people, their methodology and such, is uh, it is worthwhile if you are looking to pursue commercial work, uh, in-house counsel, do reference it. Uh, it's kind of a Zagat-style uh, prose as they uh, assess firms and lawyers. They tier them, band one, two, three, by area of law, by state, if, if you're in the United States. Go check it out. 
Uh, I think you'll agree, most of your attorneys will agree if you turn them on to their state, their practice area. Yeah, that's a pretty good list. That's a pretty good list. Um, my takeaway in, in getting to know those folks is really put some thought to your submission. Get to know when they're coming to your state to do their research, what the deadlines are to provide your submission. Pick up the phone. Talk to them. Let them know that you're going to be sending a submission in. Follow the guidelines to the letter. Importantly, they ask for references. Give your references a heads up that the folks from Chambers are, are going to be calling you. Uh, the researchers get frustrated when the names you provide them don't return the phone calls. And uh, it starts to work against you if, if the folks you've listed as references, clients, opposing counsel, judges, aren't returning their researchers' phone calls. Uh, make sure you're prepping your clients to expect the call. That will help you a great deal uh, to being uh, accepted uh, into the uh, upcoming issue for which they're doing the research. Uh, as well, uh, one of my messages I got from the editor was don't be afraid. If we, you submit the first year and you don't get in, don't be discouraged. Go again and again. Sometimes it takes two or three attempts before your submission uh, is finally accepted. So, you know, lawyers don't like rejection, um, and they tend to go crawl under that rock because they're embarrassed. Uh, but but don't, don't let that happen. Go after it next year if you're submitting on behalf of an attorney or a practice group within your firm that be deserves to be there. Don't be shy. Chambers is a good one, and it, when it was first brought to my attention, heck, I had never heard of it, but I quickly turned around and said, no, that's a good one. And a lot of the in-house marketers pay much attention to Chambers. Best Lawyers, uh, they started in the late 80s. Uh, that was a popularity contest. Basically, they asked uh, you know, current members in the directory to vote new members in, and whoever gets the most votes gets in. And I remember when I was in-house at my first law firm, Gunster Yokely, down in South Florida, when the head of our litigation department came in with his letter and said, John, I've just been selected as a best lawyer, and this is before they affiliated with U.S. News and World Report. I'd never heard of best lawyers. And he, he drops his letter on my desk. What do you think of this? I read it, and I said, you know, to be honest, Jim, that wasn't his real name, but to be honest, Jim, I, I think this is just a scam. Uh, it reeks of who's who to me, and uh, he, he insisted, uh, no, no, this is the real deal. And so, okay, I'll look into it, and I picked up the phone and called NAFO. A guy named NAFO was one of the founders of this uh, Best Lawyers, and I picked up the phone and chatted with the guy and uh, learn more about it. And uh, it was an upstart, but um, we, we went and, and played the game with Best Lawyers, and uh, now they're affiliated with U.S. News and World Report. Uh, but here again, go through those notes from the LMA meeting last summer, and uh, you'll see some comments from the editor of Best Lawyers, um, and they're happy to chat with you about the submission process and, and what it takes. So don't be hesitant. Benchmark litigation, if you're, if you're a litigation firm, Legal 500, uh, those are often mentioned by in-house marketers uh, at, at firms that have in-house marketing folks. Those seem to be uh, frequently bantered around as directories worth taking a look at. AVO, AVO. Um, Boy, the state bars are having a heck of a time with AVO because, uh, you know, you got testimonials in there from clients, and some state bars uh, don't allow testimonials. And yet you're not writing the testimonial. The client is. And, you know, how do you police all that? And uh, the state bars have had a tough time with it. But take a look at AVO. I think particularly uh, if you're marketing a more consumer-oriented practice, uh, lawyers can claim their listings. They have one whether they like it or not, kind of like Yelp. Most businesses have a Yelp listing, but they haven't taken control of it and added their website, added some pictures, added some biographical information, etc. So I would encourage you to take control of all of your lawyers' AVO listings 
and populate them with a nice photograph, uh, with a nice, you know, little overview of what the attorney does, um, link to your website, all those good stuff. Make sure you build in good listings um, that, that, that reflect well on the firm. Uh, claim them, and uh, but as you do claim them, that's when they become under the surveillance of the state bar, uh, because now you own your listings, and uh, it, it's subject to bar rules and regulations on lawyer advertising and solicitation. Uh, take a look at Avo, Martindale Hubble. Think long and hard about it. Uh, I still think it has relevance, particularly among senior lawyers. Um, and if you look at the studies the ABA and the Canadian Bar put out, the amount of business controlled by lawyers in their 60s, lawyers in their 70s, and they still, you know, those old school lawyers uh, still look to Martindale Hubble as the king. Uh, that's their perception. It's probably not reality in today's market, but uh, I still think senior lawyers tend to uh, put weight uh, on Martindale and on that AV rating. So those are uh, a few, I think, worth checking out. Uh, there are many, many others. I'm not saying that all directories are illegitimate and don't waste your money. I'm just saying be selective. Do your research. Be strategic as to how you invest your firm's marketing and business development dollars. And here's where uh, I think we'll... we'll uh, um, kind of close out with some of my tips and tricks. And uh, here's what generally my, my take on all this is. And first, I've talked about it throughout the, the session. It, it Talk to your clients. Um, talk to your clients. And figure out uh, if they reference these things at all. I'll bet you'll find that most of them don't. Uh, but But it's worth having those conversations. Uh, talk to the clients uh, of which you want more like them, be it bankers, real estate developers. I gave a few examples. As you're looking at uh, the data, all of these uh, sales departments at Fine Law and Super Lawyers, and they, uh, they all have the data that says, oh, yeah, people are using our directory left and right, and you can't afford not to be here. Look at these statistics. Consider the source. Uh, look for objective, independent statistics. Uh, don't rely on the super lawyer statistics uh, from the super lawyer salesperson because obviously they're going to point to the uh, decision that, well, you've got to be in super lawyers. Uh, consider the source. And I mentioned BTI Consulting out of Boston does a survey in house counsel. Uh, Altman Weil does an annual CLO survey, Chief Legal Officer survey. Among the questions they will ask is, you know, do, reference, do directories factor into things? And uh, among those surveys of in-house counsel, um, I think we find that directories are fairly meaningless. Uh, they may go there to cross-check. Uh, but they're more often, you know, it's it's a it's a people business, and they're 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 getting referrals from people they know, like trust. Uh, if they need to hire a lawyer for a particular matter in a, in a jurisdiction where, in which they don't already have counsel, so uh, consider the source. Try to find those independent sources as you assess, you know, who uses these things. Um, identify the ones that matter to your firm, the ones that reach your audience effectively. And a short list, not not a dozen. Three, particularly law, small law firms on the call, two, three, that really you know seem to resonate with your clients, and, and focus your resources on those two or three. See if you can't get three or four lawyers uh, recognized in the directories that matter as opposed to have one pop-up here, one pop-up there, one pop-up over that way, because uh, there's real no firm-wide thought to this, and you've scattered your resources far and wide. And I think the more you dilute your resources, the less impact you have. So identify the few and go deep. Befriend the editors. Do not hesitate to pick up the phone and chat with these people. 
Uh, so when your submissions do come in, they recognize, oh, this is this is Sheila from that firm in Florida I've been chatting with. And you know what? Your submission might get to the top of the stack and might get more favorable consideration uh, than one coming in from someone I've never talked to before. So befriend those editors. Um, I use this strategy when I, you know, I like to get published from time to time, and there's certain publications where I want to be. Uh, legal management is one. So I've gotten to know the editors, um, and uh, you know, uh, when I submit articles, you know, what articles are you interested in? What topics are you interested in? And try to line that up, and uh, off we go. So. Um, Befriend those editors, and uh, they're always looking for good firms that belong there. And as I mentioned earlier, they're looking for smaller and mid-sized law firms because they are inundated by big law. Uh, I'm looking at some questions here, Daisy, and we'll come to them. And um, um, I think as well a matching fund. I, I like this concept when it comes to charitable giving, when it comes to directory listings. Uh, it's easy for lawyers to give away firm dollars on stuff that doesn't make a difference uh, in terms of charity, in terms of directories. Uh, and all right, Mr. Partner, uh, if this directory is so important to you, uh, we'll match you 50-50. You put some skin in the game and the firm will match it. It's amazing how many of these requests for firm dollars go away uh, when the lawyer's got to put some skin in the game. So uh, consider a matching fund for the directories that you haven't put on your short list, the ones that really matter, that you're going deep. Uh, you get these other requests that come from, uh, you know, from, from whoever. Uh, put that matching fund in play, and you'll be amazed at how many of those requests go away, uh, as I say, when the lawyer has to put a little skin in the game. Um, in many cases, take the recognition. Put it in the bios, um, uh, send out a press release, but don't sign up for the certificates and the listings and the links. Um, I'm trying to put this in play myself. Um, I, I was just recognized by Law Dragon as one of the top 100 intergalactic consultants in the, you know, whatever. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice accolade. And all it means is I've been around for a while. And uh, people are starting to recognize that, and so I'm getting these, you know, uh, these these congratulations. You've been selected as one of the top consultants or one of the top uh, uh, leaders in the business of law. And believe me, it's very tempting not to buy the plaque from Law Dragon. Um, you know, I'm thinking that might look really nice over the fireplace in my office. Um, but, you know, very few people come to my office. The only person who's going to really see it is me. Um, and, I, you know, it's hard to resist that ego feed. Uh, but I've decided, uh-uh, I'm going to note the Law Dragon recognition in my biographical profile. I might send a press release out on it. But that's the end of it. Uh, I'm not going to spend a couple of hundred, couple of thousand dollars on their plaques and their and their directory listings. Um, I don't think anybody reads Law Dragon. I looked at the list once, put it aside. I'll probably never see it again. Uh, it is a good list. So take the recognition, but don't write checks. And as I've been kind of theming all along, get to get, ask. Don't be afraid to ask what you think might be a silly question. Uh, we're all trying to learn about this, and so you know, take advantage of, of ALA and its online communities. If you're trying to figure out if this directory is worthwhile or not, uh, talk to your talk to your fellow ALA members. Um, tap into the Legal Marketing Association as well. Um, you know, the in-house marketers have done a lot of research in this area, and uh, take advantage of that. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, so those are some general suggestions and guidelines. Um, I'm looking here at a few questions, uh, Daisy, and one I like from Margaret McShay asks about LinkedIn. And not really a directory per se, but I, I encourage firms and, and lawyers to have presence on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook for friends and family. 
I think LinkedIn is more for professional relationships. And uh, I'll share with you some research done by an outfit here in Atlanta called Credible, Credible with a K. They've done a lot of research uh, on profession with professionals, their presence online, uh, bankers, accountants, lawyers, and uh, a lot of research involving Georgia Tech uh, researchers on how people size you up as they look at your LinkedIn profile or perhaps your biographical profile uh, on the firm's website. First and foremost, they look at that picture. They look at that picture and they make a judgment whether you like it or not. Um, and the research suggests that a lawyer should look like a lawyer. Coat and tie for men, equivalent for women. Not too much teeth, but a slight smile. Uh, light on the jewelry for women. Uh, neat hair. Uh, but they had the same face. And all right, let's put some eyeglasses. Let's add a beard. Let's throw some earrings. Let's make the hair dark uh, to see what people react to as they sized up that photograph. The photograph is very, very important. And I think it applies to wherever you've got an attorney biographical profile on, on a directory listing, on your firm's website, in LinkedIn. Uh, invest in good professional photography uh, that reflect the quality and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, service of, of that lawyer offers. Uh, the, the brief little biographical profile, put industry, industries in there. Banks, real estate development, governor, uh, governor, uh, governments, insurance companies. Uh, lawyers tend to think in terms of areas of law, litigation, tax, corporate, state planning. Clients think in terms of industry. So make sure that there's some mention of the industries. Uh, that's what resonates with the clients. Uh, so p make sure those industries are, are set forth in the uh, little uh, – a brief biographical description, and then shared connections. Uh, people look to those shared connections. Who do I know that knows this person? Birds of a feather do flock together. So be strategic as you reach out to connect with people or respond to others' invitations to connect. Um, I personally used to think more is more. The more people I'm connected to, the better. And I don't think that way at all anymore. If I don't know you, I may not connect with you because uh, people size me up and judge my credibility based on the company I keep. And so if you're a managing partner of a decent-sized law firm, I'll, I'll accept your connection, whether I know you or not, probably. Uh, but I'm going to check you out and make sure that you, know, you reflect well on me. So be strategic with those shared connections. Uh, comments regarding super lawyers. Um, <laughs> I have strong opinions on super lawyers, and I think for the, that sophisticated client, save your money. Uh, I think they, they almost snicker if they see that super lawyer is too, uh, too, uh, too, too uh, visible. Um, if, however, you're marketing to a less sophisticated consumer of legal services who doesn't know the difference – uh, they might be impressed by that super lawyer designation. They might be impressed by that plaque. Uh, so it depends on the, the, the level of sophistication of your client, whether you want to uh, invest in super lawyers. That would be my advice. Consumer-oriented practices, less sophisticated clients, super lawyers might be a place to consider. Business lawyers, more sophisticated clients, to take a pass, you know, mention it in your bio, but you don't have to have the logo emblazoned on your home page and, and the rest of it for business clients. Uh, Daisy, we're at the top of the hour, and then uh, if anyone has any additional questions, type them in. We'll get to them. LinkedIn, super lawyers, best lawyers, extremely similar. Uh, yeah, I think they are. Uh, super lawyers is owned by Thomson Reuters uh, these days. Best lawyers got that affiliation with U.S. News and World Report. I would say best lawyers, um, more legitimate, generally speaking. 
uh, in their methodology. I think super lawyers tends to be more of a, a pay-to-play kind of thing for the consumer-oriented, less sophisticated client. Here's uh, just a couple of resources I might direct your attention to. Uh, here's a blog that uh, kind of outlines. It's amazing. You go on and Google stuff, what you find. Uh, just consider the source when you when you're doing your online research. And if if the source uh, you're you're you know if it's, if you're reading the super lawyer survey about super lawyers, eh, probably not all that credible. Uh, so go to independent sources. You'd be amazed what's out there. Jaffe PR. Uh, Jaffe has done a lot of research in this area. Um, a couple of the articles and the handout material are from Jaffe. Uh, and they, they have done, put a lot of thought to it, work with a lot of firms in uh, developing their strategy and helping them execute it. Uh, LMA, uh, Legal Marketing, a uh, great relationship with ALA and um, you know take advantage of what those marketing people have already figured out. And uh, so you don't have to go reinvent the wheel. Much of the research has already been done. And my website, of course, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't plug it. Um, but I've got a nice little collection of articles on marketing and business development uh, that you might want to uh, take a look at as well. So uh, those are some resources. And then the last slide um, you know, is my contact information. If anybody wants to carry on the conversation offline, uh, please don't hesitate to give me a call. Uh, or shoot me an email, and I'm happy to respond, uh, eager to help you out. And I might be a little more opinionated offline <laughs> than I am here in a more public forum. So, so don't hesitate if you want to ask some questions and, and chat a little bit more about this this topic. Again, your feedback, as Daisy mentioned, the beginning of the of the session. Please uh, tell us what you th thought about today's program. Um, uh, hopefully, you got some good ideas you can put into play. Uh, but uh, I think ALA, I know I am very interested in the feedback and what you folks liked about this topic and uh, how we could enhance uh, this and, and future presentations for ALA uh, and its chapters around the country. So with that, Daisy, I'll uh, kick it back to you, and I thank you for your attention this afternoon, and uh, we'll, we'll be putting this link out there in the coming days. I want to replay and, uh, and, uh, and let some of this stuff sink in. So, Daisy, back to you. All right. <clears throat> we are uh, a couple minutes now past the hour. Uh, if we didn't, we weren't able to get to your question, there's his contact information. So feel free to reach out to him and uh, follow up. I'm sure he'd be quite happy to answer your questions. Um, if you can um, make it to another one of these, next month we're going to be talking about webinar on HR and the, the topic of data breaches and what you can do about them. Registration for that is open. It is HR specific, not IT specific, so just for some clarity, though it does talk about data and breaches. Thank you, John, for speaking with us today. It was great having you back. Well, always happy to come back. I uh, love presenting to the cyber chapter, and uh, hopefully you'll have me back again in the not-too-distant future.